So I'd like to explain a little bit about my first ayahuasca experience. And I think I'm going to break this uh, video into a series of videos because I tried to do one long take uh, on my ayahuasca experiences and it was just too long of a video to, to put out there. So I'm going to try to chop it up. And so this first part is just going to be on my sort of who I am, a little bit of my background as far as drug use, and a little bit about my first experience. I want to get to this little list I made that I told myself not to forget. Uh, and I'm going to be getting to these things hopefully in the next series of videos. Uh, trauma, a little bit about tattoo, uh, Jordan Peterson, Don Hoffman, and a video on hacking your way to base reality if you are a believer in the simulation theory. Um, some warnings. I think I'll give some warnings uh, with this video, not, not just with the other videos. Um, Jung and his description of uh, what a shaman is. Uh, the show on Netflix called The OA, which I think is a very psychedelic show. Uh, enormous energy space worms, giants, the shores of heaven, and the circus. Uh, that Those relate to some of my some of my ayahuasca experiences. Uh, but for now, like I said, I'm just going to give a little bit of my background and so that if you're looking to experience ayahuasca, you have some kind of um, orientation as to, you know, who, who, how my experiences affect uh, my, my body. And so you have to understand that um, I'm 190 pounds, six foot two and 35 years old. And so when you're thinking about your dosages and you're hearing what my dosages are, um, keep that in mind that that's, that's, uh, for my body and, and how my body experienced it. So I've been interested in ayahuasca for about 20 years and I just never, uh, pulled the trigger, I guess, regarding trying it out. It was always kind of difficult because it is illegal in America and except for, I guess, certain religious practices can use it. Um, so there's always that fear of doing something illegal. As far as drug use goes, I've never done any drugs. Um, a lot of the males in my family have had drug issues. One of my brothers, uh, who's also schizophrenic, uh, sort of fell into abusing drugs and eventually died um, related, from issues relating to that. So I've always had like a bad taste in my mouth regarding drug use and always steered clear of anything, even if it was just marijuana. Uh, I'm sort of conservative in my political beliefs. So again, this is learning about who's telling you this information. Someone who's never really used drugs, someone who leans towards conservatism. Uh, I'm Christian uh, as far as those metaphysical beliefs go. And anyway, I, I was still interested in ayahuasca and I never really pulled the trigger on it until recently. Um, recently in the last six months, I've had some pretty strong edibles uh, with, I don't know, THC content around, well, I don't want to get into the THC content, but they're, they're fairly strong, especially for someone who's not used to THC. And I decided to look deeper into how I could, how I could get some ayahuasca. And I thought about going to a retreat. A lot of people are doing these, uh, Amazon, uh, retreats with shamans and, and so forth. And a lot of them look pretty good. Some of them don't look as good. Um, and I think there's some risks that you really have to consider um, when you're traveling abroad and you're, when you're traveling into the jungle. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, just have sort of rose-colored glasses on or they, they just want to see or think about the positive aspects of doing that, which I get. I could totally get into a romantic notion of traveling to the jungle and having uh, an ayahuasca ceremony with a shaman and, and that it, it all sounds great. But for me, there was just a little bit too much of a negative, you know, drawbacks to that. And so when I was adding up the pros and cons, the, the cons sort of went out there. And so I decided to try to just uh, do it myself, but with a, a person watching over me so that I don't hurt myself. And, um, and so I started with the traditional method of brewing it. And I don't want to get into any kind of the details about um, exactly how to do that or whatever. It's all very much common knowledge on the internet, but I'm just afraid of, as far as YouTube goes and the, and the, and the video staying up, um, I don't know how that will, will affect things. 
Um, like I said, I do want to get into some warnings. Um, I would not recommend doing ayahuasca for, for anybody. Although after doing it uh, several times, I believe it's a human right to be able to do it. It's, it. I think it should be your choice to alter your consciousness this way. And I, I'm on the verge of saying that everybody should do it, but I also, there's a lot of caveats that go, go along with that because it is such a, an experience. And I'm going to get into the trauma of it in, in another video. That's just going to be about the trauma. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I wouldn't recommend it, but I would, I would recommend looking into it and seeing for yourself if you, if you think it's for you. And there's, I think some people say, well, you know, you sort of feel called to do it. And if you're feeling called to do it, then you should pay attention to that intuition and that feeling and, and look into it more seriously, uh, like I did. So I was brewing it according to the traditional recipe. And what I ended up with was this cup and a half, and I, I mean a measured cup. A lot of people talk about taking a cup and this and that. And what you see in, in some videos at some retreats, the cup is really just a shot glass. It's a shot full of, of liquid. What I'm, when I say a cup and a half, I mean a measured cup and a half and uh, of this mud-like substance. And basically, my problem with this first time that I, that I had it, I was sort of on a, um, a self-imposed schedule and I'm a real stickler to schedules and time frames. Um, and I, I even took the day off from work so I can just brew all day, you just brew the brew. And so I had a certain idea in my mind that by, you know, nine o'clock I had to start to so say, I had to, I had to drink the drink. I had to drink the tea. And, um, so everything wasn't quite reduced as it should be. So you want the, a, a small amount as possible, as concentrated as possible, because it is so disgusting. But I had a cup and a half and I had read that there are certain ways of filtering it that would um, allow it to sit better in your stomach, let's say, without reducing the potency. But I didn't have time for any of that. Or, you know, this is all in my in my head. And so I just took this cup and a half of mud and I just started like guzzling it. And as soon as this stuff hit my tongue, it was like every cell in my body was rejecting it immediately. So like every taste bud, like it felt like every cell in my tongue just kind of shriveled up. And I, this might have been because of the pH. You know, I don't know if it's acidic or basic. I forget which one it is, but it's uh, it could have been per, uh, because of that. But as soon as, like I said, as soon as the first drop was hitting my tongue, I was just rejecting it. And I, f I kind of forced it down. And as soon as I finished about half of the cup and a half, I really had the thought that I was poisoning myself. A very serious thought that I, I had just poisoned myself. Um, but I, I also knew that this might be a, an expected reaction. And I, I finished the cup and a half, half of this mud. And I describe it as mud because the consistency was kind of mud-like because I didn't filter it at all. And, but I, nonetheless, I thought, well, this is how people are probably doing it in the, in the Amazon. They're, they're not filtering it. They're just pouring it and serving it. Uh, right from the, the, the pots. And that was, that was a, my biggest mistake, I, I think, as far as the first time goes, because I wasn't able to hold down the liquid long enough to get any effects. I believe I only held it down for 12 minutes and, and then it was just purge, um, just vomiting, that, that intense vomiting. And of course, those, the full 12 minutes, I was extremely nauseous. It's the kind of nausea that you're not going to feel, I don't think, from anything else. It's a very, very strong nausea, perhaps the strongest you'll feel in your life. Um, and then, yeah, it just came up, and and it was really disappointing because, I, like I said, I took a day off of work. I was brewing all day. I was looking forward to this. It's something I've been curious about for 20 years, um, and just bleh, just came out of me in 12 minutes. And so there started the quest um, to hold it down. That's all I wanted to do was just hold it down for for enough time for it to to feel the effects. Now I know a lot of people 
will brew a second dose uh, in case the first one does not stay down. And I was not one of those people. I did not brew a second dose. Um, I had other doses, but I, I just wasn't prepared. I thought to myself that I, there's some, I'm doing something wrong enough to warrant rethinking this process, like maybe filtering it, maybe looking into several other things to be able to hold it down longer instead of just taking another shot. I could, frankly, I could not even imagine drinking another cup and a half because the way I had it uh, portioned out, I needed a cup and a half to get the right amount of uh, active ingredients. I couldn't even fathom drinking another cup and a half after I just vomited that. So, you know, there, there again, make sure, I would say, lessons learned here. Make sure you do the reduction properly. Make sure you have enough time uh, allocated for this. Don't be in a rush. Uh, don't have these preset notions in your head about what you know how you have to do it when you have to do it like I did. Um, make sure you have a second dose ready. Make sure it's small. Like I like most people have it as far as the concentration goes. Small meaning about a, the size of a shot or maybe a double shot, but usually a shot. And so that way you're prepared. Uh, if you if you have a limited amount of time to do this and you really have to get it done in one go, you take the shot, you vomit, you take the other shot. You know you have to you have to space it out a little bit. Um, but anyway, that that was as far as my first experience went. It, it was a big disappointment. Um, it was really gross. The, some people wonder about the taste of ayahuasca. That was something I was trying to discern before I actually got into it. I was curious about you know all these different experiences, and the taste was one of them. And I've, I've heard it described as like the most bitter, burnt coffee that you can imagine. I've heard it described as like 50-year-old, rotten uh, prune juice. And these seem like pretty apt descriptors uh, for you to get some sense of what it is. And then I've heard other people just be like, oh, well, it wasn't as bad as I thought, and I just drank it. I can't imagine that. I guess it's different for different people. Um, and perhaps it depends on your, your filtering methods and so forth. Unfiltered right from the pot it's at least for me it was just beyond disgusting beyond belief I, I, I frankly can't believe that I even was able to uh, get it into my stomach to begin with that I didn't just start uh, coughing it up from my mouth uh, that's how disgusting it was so I think I'll leave this video uh, here at that as my first experience being a failure I was rushing it I was uh, impatient I was foolhardy and I wasn't filtering it and it is the most disgusting brew that you could ever uh, taste. Uh, my, like I said in my next videos, I'm going to get into uh, the trauma of it and what I mean by that. There's something I mean that is not the ordinary meaning of trauma that I'll get into. And I'll get into more details about my actual trips uh, once they became successful. Um, it actually took me three more times of testing and uh, about... 10 hours of just intense nausea to figure out what was going on with the traditional brew that I was making and from there to move on to different methods, uh, more successful methods, which I will talk about in later videos. So if you like this sort of thing, if you're interested in ayahuasca journeys and trips, I'm sort of making that for those types of people. Uh, I was one of those people before I started uh, actually brewing for myself and I know, you know, you like to get, you perhaps want to get as much information as possible before you take that plunge, uh, then like and subscribe and, and make sure you hit the little uh, notification bell to get the notifications for the upcoming videos if you're interested in this sort of thing.